In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the thyroid and the parathyroid glands. So the parathyroid glands and the thyroid glands are glands located in the main thyroid gland. So the thyroid gland is actually a bilobed H-shaped gland that sits just below the larynx and anterior to the trachea. So this is the anterior view of the uh, larynx. You've got the larynx and then you've got the thyroid gland. This is the thyroid gland right here. And it does a couple of things. It actually secretes several different hormones. It secretes uh, secretes T3 and T4. T3 is triiodothyronine and T4 is tetraiodothyronine. And then it also secretes another hormone called calcitonin. It's important to note that calcitonin is not controlled by the anterior pituitary gland. It's actually controlled by calcium in the blood. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. The parathyroid gland, it, there are four of them and they are located on the posterior side. So this is the posterior view. Uh, looking from back to front, you have the right, which makes up uh, these four uh, two glands here. And then the left is these two glands here. Parathormone is also controlled by uh, the calcium concentration in the blood. And the parathormone and calcitonin actually work together. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But first, let's look at how T3 and T4 work in the body. Well, uh, T3 and T4 are secreted here in the thyroid gland. But what stimulates that? Well, there's a thyroid stimulating hormone. And what secretes that or stimulates that is the thyrotropin releasing hormone. And that's all stimulated by the hypothalamus. So the way I like to think about it is a toilet bowl tank. So this is a toilet, right? So inside the toilet is a float and the, and the tank is a float. And when the toilet is flushed, water goes down and the tank fills through this and it starts to fill up and fill up and fill up and this uh, float actually rises. So what happens is once the float gets to the top, it actually shuts the water off. We, I like to think of this in terms also when you're talking about T3 and T4. So let's say you're getting a stimulus from the thyroid gland. So the thyroid gland is the toilet bowl tank, right? So the TSH is the, uh, the, TSH is the stimulus of the water being filled in. So let's say there's a need. So you need more T, uh, you need more hormone, you need more hormone, you need more hormone, you need more hormone. And finally you get enough. What happens is this float shuts off. So there's going to be a, a stopping of this thyroid stimulating hormone. And this is called a negative feedback loop. So once that desired level is reached, it sends a signal back to the anterior pituitary gland, says stop making uh, or stop secreting thyroid tropin releasing hormone. That actually stops the TSH production and then this turns off. Now, when there's a need, it's basically the whole system gets kicked back on. So when do we need different levels or different uh thyroid hormones. Well, first you've got T3. If there's a need for a short duration of activity in terms of the metabolism and a fast reaction, T3 is going to be released. If there's a long duration, so more long-term control of uh, metabolism, that's going to be T4 and that's going to you're going to have much slower reactions. So the actions of these specific hormones do several things. First off, they stimulate carbohydrate metabolism and then they're also responsible for body heat. So they they stimulate body heat production and they also help to maintain normal temperature. They're also really important for uh, stimulating protein synthesis after we take in food. So let's circle back to calcitonin. Remember that calcitonin and parathormone are both affected by the level of cal uh, calcium in the blood. So it has a direct relationship with osteoclasts. If you go to the lesson on uh, bone formation, we talk specific about, specifically about osteoclasts. And osteoclasts, these guys here, they break down bone and that bone is broken down into calcium and that calcium is released in the blood. So anytime there's a, um, an increase, an increase in osteoclast production, you're going to have a direct relation of increase in calcium in the blood. So we have to, so what happens is we look at these two hormones to figure out what's happening with calcium. So let's look at calcium here. So let's say the calcium goes up, there's an increase in calcium in the blood. So that's going to increase calcium or calcitonin production because calcitonin uh, has a uh, osteoblast to stop making new bone or to make new bone. So it's going to actually pull in calcium from the blood. 
The osteoclasts are going to stop breaking down bone. So this actually stops. So this decreases. And that means that the overall blood calcium, because we're pulling in blood here and there's no new bone being broken down, this is going to result in that low blood calcium. So let's look. Uh, there's also another mechanism that happens. So any calcium that's taken in from the food is actually excreted in the stool from the calcitonin control. And also the calcium uptake in the kidneys and the, the PCT, the proximal convoluted tubule, um, it shows that there's an increase in that uptake and it's actually kicked out via urine. Now, what happens with parathormone? Well, it's the exact opposite. It poses the activity of calcitonin. So if we look over here, let's say there's decreased blood um, calcium. So we need to increase the amount of osteoclast production. Well, what happens? Well, you've got this parathormone production. This parathormone goes up. It's going to stimulate that osteoclast. This is what we're talking about right here. That increased osteoclast production is going to cause a, a breaking down of bone, and that's going to return the blood uh, or return the calcium to the blood. So that's going to result in an increase in blood calcium. So sometimes we can have excess or def or deficient amounts of a particular hormone. So when we're talking specifically about the thyroid gland or thyroidism, we're talking about uh, how much of the T3 or T4 production is being made. So in cases of hyperthyroidism, this is when there is an excess production of T3. And what happens with uh, T3 or T4? And it, when there's an increase, because like we were talking about with that negative feedback loop, hey, well, we're, telling, we're trying to go back to the pituitary gland and we're trying to tell it to turn off. So there's going to be low, a low level of TSH, but the T3 and the T4 are still being produced in spite of that. That's going to lead to this increased metabolic state. So if we look at the other way that this is, you have this hypothyroidism. So these are low levels of T3 and T4. So we're trying to stimulate production back to the pituitary gland, and that's just not happening. So it's going to result in a high level of TSH in spite of these low levels of T3 and T4. That's going to lead to a decreased level of metabolic state. With the thyroid, the parathyroid gland, parathyroidism, we're looking at hyperparathyroidism and hypoparathyroidism. We're talking specifically about uh, parathormone, so with hyperparathyroidism, we're talking about an increased uh, production of PTH. Now remember that PTH has a direct relationship on the calcium in the blood. So if you have an increase in PTH, you're also gonna have an increase in that osteoclast production. And if the osteoclasts are breaking down bone, you're also gonna have an increase in blood calcium. So if we look here, so hyperparathyroidism, we're having an increased secretion of that parathormone. That's going to increase calcium in the blood because you have the increased osteo osteoclast production. But what happens to the bones? Well, because there's all these osteoclasts that are working, it's actually going to cause bone density, uh, a decrease in that bone density. So let's look at the other way. So hypoparathyroidism, that's a decrease in, in uh, parathormone that's going to uh, result in that in, or decrease in the calcium in the blood, that's going to lead to muscle twitching, respiratory, and muscle failure. There are excellent lessons on all of these disease processes, so I encourage you to check those out. So let's recap. The thyroid gland is located in and just below the larynx and in front of the trachea. The parathyroid gland are those four glands, and they're located on the posterior side of the thyroid gland. Those thyroid hormones are T3 and T4 and calcitonin. Remember, calcitonin is not controlled by the pituitary gland. Then there's parathormone, which is secreted by that parathyroid gland. Remember that there's a direct relationship between parathormone and the osteoclast production. And then finally, calcitonin is directly a response to calcium levels in the blood. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.